back again. That last one was pretty quick. Uh, we're gonna just jump right into the actual 2K designs where our L is equal to two, so each treatment, so we're, again, we're gonna have K treatments, and we're going to have each treatment's only gonna be allowed to have two, two values. So a high value, a low value, a uh, what's called a one and a negative one type value it makes it a little bit easier just this or that type of thing so you're not going to be able to do a bunch of variables between those you're just picking two levels and calling it good to go and we'll see how that plays out in a little bit so this is the most common design setup so we have k factors or treatments and we've called these treatments before some people call them factors variables each with two levels and we're designating them as plus and minus and there's a reason we're going to do that so we're going to make we're just going to make it a lot easier for our analysis when we do this two to the k refers to the number of unique cells or runs in each replicate so let's kind of talk about what runs and replicates are so runs is a single set of all settings that you're going to run. A replicate is the number of times you run you perform make it easier each set of runs. So I might have, for example, I might do four experiments in a run, four experiments in a run. And I might do this three times, which means I do 12 experiments. So I did 12 experiments. I did three times, or this is three replicates. And there are four experiments in a run right so the four times three equals the 12 times of experiments it's a very easy to analyze experiment we'll see why we're going to use our regression tool with a lot of modifications to make it even easier and it's very good at the beginning of a study to do a two-level design just to kind of get yourself a sense of where it's at um, we're going to talk much later about how you kind of modify this after the initial uh, two-level setting so very very common design is the 2-2 design so it's basically, again, this has two variables and there are two levels for each variable. Okay, and so for each replicate, so there's going to be four runs, right? Four runs are four different options that we could run. And each replicate is going to consist of those four runs. And right, so our options are we have run one, we run x1 variable and x2 variables are both set at their lowing, our low variable. So these are the variables. And levels, that's the plus minus. So we're going to run the possibility we run both variables at their low value. We have both variables at their high value. Then we have the middle ones, which is one at the low value, one at the high value one at the high value, one at the low value. Those are the four different options we're going to do. A couple different models we could build. We could build that the output is due to something that's not due to the variables we're talking about, plus some factor that, plus some coefficient times whether or not it's high or low, plus some factor defining if it's high or low on, on the second variable, plus then our, our old friend the error. We could also include the interaction model, which is we have our original three variables, but then we've added on this interaction term. And this literally means the two variables are interacting with each other. So this is interaction. And then we could also have, and the value there is literally, it's x1 times x2, or our low times low, or high times high, and all that type of stuff. We'll talk about it when we do an example. Plus our friend the error again. Again, it still only checks at two different values of the factors. But it allows the investigation of interaction effects because now we can actually say, does this coefficient mean anything? Does it have any impact? Design graphic, the way I kind of look at it is we build out a square. So this variable might be, this could be temperature. This could be um, pressure. 
So for example, this high value could be 300 PSI. This could be 100 PSI. This could be at 60 degrees centigrade. This could be at 300 degrees centigrade, right? And so these are the four experimental places we're going to be able to do. And we're just gonna do those four experiments. We're not gonna do any other ones and try to get some idea of what is going on here. And what we're trying to do is test out, looking for a response, is this a function of pressure and temperature? Or is it a function of pressure, temperature, and some interaction between pressure and temperature? Right, so mean effects model, and this one has interaction effects model. And so we're going to look at that, and Y is what we're going to look at for a response surface, and that's the idea. And graphically for people, you know, if X1 and X2 don't really do anything, then the response is constant. So if the response is constant, then we know it's just going to be like a Y equals Y bar type model. Right, which means that X1 and X2 don't have anything to do with anything, right? So if we get that kind of result. Right, neither one matters. If we get a situation where, for example, X2 matters, but X1 doesn't, we'll notice that we'll have kind of a typical slant, right? So it doesn't really matter what X1 does, X2 is gonna be the one that drives everything, right? And this would be a Y is equal to a beta zero plus a beta one times X1 plus let's say a beta two times X2 model plus error. And you're gonna find out that this is equal to zero and it doesn't really affect it, so your real final model is going to be that it's just due to X2. All right, so that's the idea in this particular case. Likewise, another version is the same thing. This case is where Y is a beta zero plus a beta one X1, and there's no X2 term, right? So beta two is equal to zero, so then X2 doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter what the other variable set at. You could have all the pressure drives everything. The temperature doesn't do anything, for example. Then you have situations where they both might matter, right? In this case, I get a different response if they're both low. I get a different response if they're both high, or, or if they're alternating, then that's a problem, right? So this is one where I really do have to worry about having them both in there, and I might potentially even have to have an interaction effect in there, right? So this is a case where they both might matter. Right? And the issue with this particular one is your degrees of freedom. So if we have the full model, this is the full model, full model with interaction effects. All right, so interaction effects are this one, and these are our main. This is our main effect and main effect. Well, the problem is that because they have only two levels, we get one degree of freedom goes to here, one degree of freedom gets put in here, and then we have one times one is one, so one degree of freedom goes here. Right, so we have all these degrees of freedom here. And then for total, since we only collected four data points, minus one, we have three degrees of freedom to spend. We spent it all on the model. Three degrees of freedom for the model. Three degrees of freedom total. We have zero degrees of freedom for the error if we only did one replicate. Well, okay, that's a problem, right? We don't wanna to have to do that. That's gonna be a major issue. So how we get past that, we can do more replicates. As we do more replicates, that's gonna cause our degrees of freedom to total to go up, but our degrees of freedom of our model stay constant. So we can then add it to our degrees of freedom for our error. So we can do more replicates. We can run the experiment set over and over and over again. So just to make it clear before we kind of close this out on talking about the 2-2 design before we move on to the 2-3 design. So just to reiterate what a 2-2 design is. A 2-2 design is one in which there are two factors. That's this two. Each one has two levels. That's this two. Right, and then and each of those levels means a plus and minus, but it could be actually results and it could be an on off, it could be a 24.3 millimeters and a 12 millimeters, it can be anything we want. Each replicate 
needs to run to two runs. You can model it with or without the degrees of freedom in the air. You can model it with or without interaction, your choice. If you only run one replicate, this is the kind of thing you really want to pay attention to. If you only run one replicate, then you have no degrees of freedom error for an interaction model, right? You'll have it if you want to do just a means model, but if you want to do the full interaction model, only one replicate doesn't give you anything left for the error, right? So then you're going to have a problem. It's going to fit too easily and it's going to run into some problems. We'll talk about that when we do the example. So that gets you started on the 2-2 design basic idea, and we're going to move on to a 2-3 before we really get going on a really good example. All right, hopefully that helps out and get things started. Talk to you later.